All right, audience, this is a new segment we want to introduce uh, for our guest episodes, having Cameron here for Scooby-Doo. This is the special shot for a special guest segment, or at least I need to workshop that. We I looked up recipes for Scooby-Doo related alcoholic beverages, and I came up with the Scooby-Doo shot. Now, what this is, audience, before we take it, it is Malibu rum, banana liqueur, pineapple juice, M Midori melon liqueur, heavy cream, whipped cream, and topped with a Scooby-Doo graham cracker. Are you sure that's it? That's it right now. <laughs> so terrifying. Let's go. We're gonna. Do what some... do we eat? The graham cracker first. What do we do? I, I, I think you just do it all at once. Just drink it, and we'll see. But you know what? And if it's a horrible reaction, I'll just cut right now <laughs> to all of us be like, okay, listen. <laughs> all right, uh, guys, in the middle. Let's see. Shall cheers. we? What? Cheers to what? To Scooby-Doo. To Scooby-Doo. Let's solve this, gang. All right, three, two, one. Let's see how it tastes. No, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, to be honest with you guys. I don't know, man. No, yeah, I'm not feeling that. All right, so... <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Here's what we'll do. We'll we'll get just like our episode. We'll give it a rating uh, out of a hundred. Cameron, first thing my my brain tells me right now is uh, 12. 12. 12 <laughs> out of a hundred. I'll give this uh, forty seven. <laughs> 30. Okay, well that's that's a rounding result. Don't drink this. <laughs> is a rounding result. The assault on the hotel to the end of the movie. It just it's just goes insane. Like yeah. the, it, like everything that happens is just what am I watching? <laughs> Scooby, Shaggy, Daphne, and Mary Jane manage to get away. They see the creatures haul their friends off, and they're like, "Yep, <laughs> this is funny." They call the Coast Guard. <laughs> they say, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> say our friends have been kidnapped, and the Coast Guard's like, "All right, we'll send someone over." Their friends have been kidnapped. <laughs> 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 It's just like, uh oh. <laughs> Wide Squidward, conspiracy. Squidward, the robots have taken over the Navy. <laughs> Not the Navy. They wake up the next morning because apparently the Coast Guard never came and the, everybody's acting like nothing happened. They're, yeah. It's all cleaned up too. Uh -huh. It's all yeah, clean. Yeah, somehow it's all cleaned up. They replaced windows in like six hours overnight. Somehow, yep. you know, just magically everything's fine. And actually, as a kid, I never realized, I never made the connection why they wake up on the beach but that they were waiting for the Coast Guard. Yeah, the whole they time. were waiting for it. It was yeah. literally last night that I made that connection was like, oh shit, that actually made, they didn't just randomly pass out on the beach like fucking homeless people. Like, yeah, yeah. same here. Everything's fine. And they're just like, let's just act cool and let's search around, okay? And uh, they find Sugar Ray. Performing Sugar live. Ray making an appearance. <laughs> I just want to fly. Uh, what, you, what you want, what you want. <laughs> then Fred Scooby jerks. and Shaggy come across Fred. Acting like nothing happened. He's just dancing. He's, he's enjoying got some himself. Cool new lingo, though. What Buddy. a dog! And, and uh, uh, dog. dog. This is the second part that made me shit bricks as a kid. When it turns out Fred is possessed, and he like breathes the like the gas, the knockout yeah. gas, and he just roars at them. And Shaggy and Scooby, rightfully so, go ah! <laughs> just run. run. <laughs> oh no, they got Fred. What the fuck happened to Fred? <laughs> Fred says something specific. He says, "Get the dog." Scooby's assessment is Fred's in a bad mood. <laughs> <laughs> Fred's Sh angry. Shaggy's oh, like, he's not in a bad mood, Scoop. <laughs> Fred's arm busts through the wall and grabs Shaggy by the neck. He's a monster. <laughs> I don't, and Sugar Ray is attacking them too, like smashing their instruments <laughs> on the <laughs> which, which, I can't I'll be honest, movie. I've had a nightmare about myself. <laughs> Sugar Ray comes into my, tries to break into my bedroom in the middle of the night. It's pretty scary. Oh, is that not a the stress dream that everybody has? Well, I just thought we all as millennials go through it. <laughs> It's a formative millennial experience having a nightmare about I Mike. Just want to fly. <laughs> they escape on ATVs. Yep, I think. Yes. Mary Jane ATVs. still. Mary Jane's yeah. still hanging out with them. Mary Jane pops up. They pick her up, but Scooby knows something's off about Mary Jane because this part creeped me out too. When the branch hits her face and it looks like she's all like creepy looking, she's wearing a mask. Yeah, yeah. Mary so Jane is a man in a mask. Is that, what he keeps telling Shaggy. <laughs> but that shot reminds me a lot of uh, if you guys remember that episode of South Park with the succubus. Yes. Uh, when she comes in <laughs> and is like, oh, I'm going to marry Chef tomorrow. And there's not a goddamn thing you can do about it. <laughs> I got to go find my friend. No, Shaggy. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, I mean, no, don't go. No, well, don't go. <laughs> don't go. Well, this was about the fourth time we saw the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> South Park back to I gave him a dollar. You gave, she gave him a dollar. <laughs> thought he'd leave us alone if I gave him a dollar. Well, of course he's not going to leave us a warm woman. Scooby and Shaggy get into a scuffle because Scooby's like, you're whipped. 
bro. <laughs> <You're whipped. laughs> full, on, full on says you are whipped, Shaggy. Yeah. Like that is it, fucked up for a dog to say, man. They're ready to swing on each other. They are. They're, they're, they are they're, they're having a good friend's tussle, but they're pretty pissed at each other. And then Scoop falls through a trap door and Shaggy immediately drops the act. He's like, oh no, my friend, I got to save him. And but he, Scooby does not see this. So as far as Scooby is concerned, Shaggy is still pissed. Mm -hmm. right? That's true. Yeah. Shaggy's still whipped. Yeah. And <laughs> Shaggy goes down there and he finds, <laughs> this is so bad shit. He finds a cauldron of everybody's souls. He found souls. a giant <laughs> cauldron filled with everyone's souls. Everyone that, that has had their souls taken from them at the park where they're possessed. Can I, These can are I, where the souls are. Can I just say um, that cauldron, actually, the, the movie borrowed from, from me. That is my cauldron of souls. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> just, just putting that out there. Who you got in there? Um, many people. Oh, yeah. okay. Celebrities included, but oh, you know, shit. it's it's probably nicer uh, if I don't name names. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't want people to realize that you know their favorite movie star is uh, actually missing a soul. Oh, <laughs> yeah. The, you're the Illuminati. <laughs> it's one man Illuminati, right? One here. man Illuminati. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so they have a cauldron of souls, and Shaggy apparently. Even though there's like a thousand thousands of souls in here. Yeah, Velma gets his attention because she's them. in there. Yeah. Yeah. She's he, like, Shaggy, pick me up and let me go. I can go back to my body because I just know how this works. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> just magically. And and Shaggy with uh it magically impeccable aim is just doink and yeah, perfect. Got her. Finding everybody. This is so bizarre to like a kid, just like th what this is not Scooby Doo anymore. What the yeah. fuck am I watching? <laughs> this I don't know, monsters man. I was in are real. I didn't even give a fuck. I I did not as a, a kid Cameron did not feel like they jumped the shark here Damn. I was just like I was fully in it with uh, with the movie with with the the director this everything. is less scary than which which is which <laughs> <laughs> somehow yeah he saves all of that this is pretty funny he picks a random dude he's like thank you he's like I'm sorry I'm looking for my friends and just puts him back yeah <laughs> considering these souls are on autopilot like there's no reason Shaggy couldn't have just like Not taken the... people by the handful and just thrown them out Fred goes into Daphne <laughs> yeah. and we get some more adult jokes oh yes hey I can look at myself naked <laughs> and immediately pulls the shirt out and looks and checks out his cleavage yep. check out a cleavage Velma, uh, no. what, Velma I, what, her... what am I missing from cruel intentions <laughs> Velma gets her body back and it turns out if you get your soul back the creature gets evicted from your body and they blow up when they're in the sunlight because that's how they have to that's how that's why they're taking the bodies so yeah. they can survive in the sunlight yeah pulling uh, is, this, is this also gremlins rules here I or? guess yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's gremlins yeah <laughs> Well said. I mean, th these creatures kind of look like tall, lanky gremlins a little bit. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> this part's kind of funny where they all keep switching bodies because they. it turns out if they're in proximity of like the little Hellraiser thing, their souls will just keep <laughs> yeah. coming in and out of their bodies. So they keep switching bodies, cycling to each other's bodies, trying to find the right one. Finally, they do. And they say, all right, now we need to come up with a plan. <laughs> well, because then they come across Miguel Nunez Jr. again. And he's just like, ah, uh, here's the backstory of what these creatures might be trying to do. They want to rule the world, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And they need, what, what do they need? They need a, a pure soul. A pure soul. Well, a where are they going to find a pure human soul? And Velma said, didn't say it had to be human. Smash cut to Scooby. In a cage. <laughs> All locked up, looking <laughs> miserable. And he gets goaded into becoming a sacrifice for a sacrifice. Mr. Bean. <laughs> yeah. Rowan it, Atkinson is behind all this. And in classic uh, Scooby-Doo fashion, this dog is too dumb to ask any questions. Yep. He's just like, Mr. Bean's being really nice to me. And He's giving, giving me, me free food. Scooby snacks. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to believe anything he says. Yep. Um, I, tr I trust this man with my whole life. And Mr. Bean isn't even like hiding anything from it. He's full on like, yeah, we're going to sacrifice you. You're going to we, die. Well, he's, and he's Scooby's like, fine. fine no, with he's, me. no, he's sweet talking him. He doesn't even tell him what's going to happen. He's just like, we would love Scooby-Doo. We love you. We, we would love. We would be honored if you would be a sacrifice. He doesn't know what a sacrifice is. He doesn't know what that means. Yeah, but he doesn't care to ask either. Because he's a dumb dog. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what, that's why he's so pure. He's just he's just so he's just so happy and nice. He's just happy go lucky. He's just going with it, going with the flow. You know, they what, just, whatever everyone else yeah. wants from him, he's just like, yeah, sure. You give me Scooby stacks, I'll do whatever you want. Yep. The gang puts all of this together, and uh, they they all decide to come together to save their dog. Work together to form a plan because they know the ritual is going to happen. The first thing they're trying to do, number one, is. They're going to knock over the Cauldron of Souls. Yes. That's the thing. They're going to knock it over using the strength of, I think, the, the pulleys the and pulley the system. Crane. Yeah. yeah. 
when that happens, they're going to use the punk rock disco ball to shape like shine, a skull to, sh to shine light into the entire room and hit all the demons, I believe. Right. Yes. And that's part A and B. But in, again, in classic Scooby Doo fashion, Shaggy <laughs> immediately fucks it up because he goes to clip and tie the, this this rope to the cauldron and somehow just clips himself and not the cauldron. <laughs> Yeah, I forgot. And he gets he gets fucking hauled up to the yeah. ceiling yeah. and nearly breaks his like, back. Yeah, like full on. That's a fucking concussion. Yeah. yeah, but it doesn't matter because the ritual's starting and everyone comes in in the robes and Fred and Velma have to blend in. They get caught immediately. <laughs> well, <laughs> everyone stops dancing and points at them. And like, yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> Come on, guys. It's electric slide. <laughs> You, fo you forgot about the second part of the dance, yo, bro. Yo, 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 yo. Come on. Daphne makes it out, though. Yeah. Sh Shaggy goes to Subi, try to talk some sense into him. He's just like, no, that's not a good thing to be a sacrifice, Scoop. <laughs> and so they're about to escape, and then Scooby just gets his soul sucked down yeah. immediately. I love the timing of this scene. Honestly, I think it's so hilarious that, that they have this whole heartfelt conversation, and right when Shaggy gets Scooby to be like, okay, okay, let's let's run, no worry, and then immediately just gets stabbed with the, the, the fucking the magical soul sucker, item. Yeah. Yeah. Body like looks at his soul, and it's like, and then the body just goes, goes I go, oh my God. Scooby-Doo is dead. <laughs> Scooby's dead, bro. Yep. Scooby is just being held by this crane. It's being held by this crane. Oh, the Cauldron of Souls is being sucked into And then, yeah, the, cauldron, the Cauldron's yeah. being Through sucked the, into Mondavari. The, the who, Damon who Ritus is the, is the uh, triangle he, Millennium Puzzle. Yeah. yeah, he has absorbed the Millennium Puzzle into his heart at this point. Mm -hmm. And he's just sucking in all of the hundreds of thousands of or whatever the fuck, however many souls that are in the Cauldron. Mondavarius gets knocked down. Scooby gets back into his body. And then they find out Mondavarius is a man in a mask. And they pull his face off. And he's a robot Ooh. controlled by <laughs> da -da 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 -da! Scrappy yes. Doo. Scrappy yeah, the robot's Doo. chest opens up. Turns out he's not Ash from Alien. <laughs> he's yeah. being controlled by Scrappy Doo with a tiny little Damon Ritus in yeah. his chest. <laughs> Tur turns out this this entire thing, this entire plan, getting the gang to the island, getting Scooby's soul, everything. This is literally just so Scrappy can feel like he has a bigger dick than he does. Yes. This this floored me as a kid. I was just I, like, why the fuck is Scrappy Doo doing this? Yeah, I would <laughs> love this. You know what I would love the motivation? I, so I, I would have loved the motivation to me. Scrap, why are you doing this? He goes, bring me Daphne. <laughs> 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 because he's got all the souls via the Damon Ritus in him, he turns into this giant monster. <laughs> he turns into a giant demon dog. Yep. And he's just like, the only thing I need to complete is Scooby Doo. And it says, Me? Don't you mean Melvin Doo? <laughs> Melvin <laughs> Doo? That's a good payoff. Br bringing back the <laughs> Melvin Doo joke. Yes. That was <laughs> good. They're possessed and out of his mind. So while Shaggy and Scooby are running for their lives from Mega Scrappy, uh, <laughs> Daphne's fighting the Luchador guy. Daphne's fighting Telemundo. Finally, man. finally yes. showing off her, like, I'm a black belt now yeah. skills. Shaggy is getting distracted by Mary Jane. Yeah. She's like, Don't help your friend. And she's, she, like, breathes the shit into his face and he's like oh yeah fuck scooby-doo <laughs> no, he Fred, just smiles he doesn't knock out it's obviously weed scooby's being picked up by scrappy he goes bad scrappy and flicks him on the nose <laughs> yeah. scrappy just roars at yeah, him which is That's, the payoff for the, to the thing fred did to him earlier yeah. <laughs> yeah. so so much honestly the, the this last sequence does a really good job of paying off Bring it all so home. many things from the beginning of the movie yeah even just like little jokes here and there whatever the, the nose flick daphne being a black belt now yes. she gets a whole fight sequence with somebody like fucking three times her size yes. and somehow kicks his ass they really <laughs> paid attention to all all of the setup that they possibly could have had in the beginning. And they were like, all right, let's check. Let's go through this checklist, baby. Fred and Velma distract Scrappy and Shaggy gets on the crane and basically unplugs the uh, Damon Ritus, the, the Millennium Puzzle from Scrappy's chest and starts letting out all the souls. Yeah, all the, let, lets out all the souls around the same time Daphne like kills the luchador guy. She, into kick, the she kicks him through the shutter. He falls the entire length of the cavern. He yes. hits the cauldron. fucking cauldron. That's what happens. And knocks yes. it over. So that man's dead. He fell like 100 <laughs> feet, knocks over the cauldron, and all the souls go out back into their host bodies, and they drop the disco ball so that all of the possessed people have the animals that are inside them killed. So Scrappy gets turned back into Scrappy Doo and Scooby just bitch slaps him into a wall. Yeah. <laughs> I can still take you. Ow. The, the authorities, authorities show finally up. Arrive. They arrest Scrappy Doo and his minions because he was working with like the the creepy guys and yeah. the luchador. Not 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 Miguel Nuñez. He was his own thing. No, no, he was a good guy. They find 
real Rowan Atkinson, though. Yes, Apparently, yes. who's been just yep. locked up for two years. Yeah. yeah, no no mention of how he survived, no mention of, like, food or anything yeah, like that. he looks that. like Tom Hanks in Castaway. He's yep. like, and he explains to Shaggy, that little pest showed up for auditions, and next thing you know, I'm stuck in here for two years. Thank you so much for letting me out. That's a long fucking time to be building this plan of just petty revenge against your former family, spending two years possessing all these thousands of people who are coming through this island and finally being like, all right, all I need left is one one pure Scrappy's soul. Scrappy's playing like the long the game, the long game possible. Perfect candidate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the longest game. Where do you, where do you get a robot from? <laughs> yeah, and I mean, first off, where the fuck did Scrappy learn how to, how, where all this fucking shit came from and like how to take advantage of the demon Ritus and shit? Like, I don't... It's not explained. They they just gloss over that. Even though in the sequel, there's a whole series about a whole exhibition dedicated to who they captured before. None of the exhibition in the sequel is dedicated to this movie at all. <laughs> this movie might as well have not existed. They haul Scrappy off in like a crate, <laughs> like a pet crate. And he's like, I would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for you meddling to shut the door. And he's just like, obviously going, you motherfuckers. <laughs> you, you, I, think, like, I think it's, I think they cut off sons of bitches. Yeah. Yeah. Shaggy's just like, Jesus. Scrap, you didn't have to like go, to like go on an ego trip and try to rule the world to kill humanity. <laughs> this was your choice. <laughs> yeah. Fred learns to give Velma credit. They learn and get together. They do a cheer at the end. And that's the end of the movie. I yeah, think. and then Shaggy yeah. and Scooby eat ghost peppers. Eat ghost peppers. <laughs> yes. Why don't you put your mouth where your mouth is? <laughs> and they have a good time at the end of it all hanging out together. Yeah, it's I, fun. I love at that end sequence. Uh, my favorite part of that is when Scooby's all freaking out because of all the, the peppers he's eaten. And Shaggy just grabs his tongue and just layers ketchup, the yeah. fucking ketchup <laughs> all across his tongue. And then after that, and then they go, okay, let's both do it again. <laughs> we went through it all. Shall we move on to the facts? Yeah, maybe I think we, we should, should get a move yeah, on. Let's move on to the facts section. Just a reminder, these are real facts about the movie that I've researched for Scooby-Doo, and Nick and Cameron have never seen these before. Although I might know some of them. He already. might know we'll some see. of them, are goody two-shoes. <laughs> <laughs> fucking nerd. <laughs> these are all real facts, just with some other stuff included. Fact number one. Scooby-Doo was released on June 14th, 2002 to a $54 million opening weekend. It made $153 million domestically while in theaters, placing it at number 362 on the inflation-adjusted domestic box office list. Some of its competition in the summer of 2002 included Undercover Brother, starring Uncle Ruckus as Smart Brother. Fucking great movie. Spy Kids 2, The Island of Lost Dreams. All-time star great. Starring Megan Trainer's husband as Juni Cortez. Signs, which I shit you not, was produced and distributed by Disney. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, Spider-Man, starring... And they say that a hero will save us. us. Together, all together, domestically, 153 million. Internationally, 123 million on top of that. So yeah. for a total of 276 million. It was uh, a hit. Huge that, hit. That sounds like a hit. Yep. Yeah, they, they loved it. Production budget was $84 million, So worldwide box office is 3.3 times production budget. People loved it. Not uh, was not well received. Straight up here, I have no idea what the global discourse is about this movie. I have my own personal experience <laughs> and, and opinions on it. it and was, that uh, I've not paid any was, attention to it, anything it, else. Everyone's like, you're wrong. I don't care. <laughs> this movie isn't stupid. You're <laughs> stupid. <laughs> I think as time's gone on, people have grown to love it a little bit more especially our generation Did you know that uh, the guy the kid from spy kids is married to megan trainer daryl sabana that, i that's that's some new information for me did you yeah. know that like she's so needy that they have toilets in the same bathroom so they can poop together no. i could have went the rest of my life well without now you knowing know. that i learned that i learned it so you had to learn it thanks crystal thanks told me that, that. she's like look that. it's on tiktok awesome <laughs> fact number two James Gunn revealed that in the original script, Velma was written explicitly gay, though the studio decided to block any references to her sexuality in the edit. One of the shots cut out of the final film was a passionate kiss between Daphne and Velma. For those keeping track, this is the second movie we've done where Sarah Michelle Gellar has made out with a woman on camera. <laughs> Stay tuned for more. Will, and we will cover <laughs> all of these in due time. They were supposed to have Velma and, and Daphne make out because I assume every, James Gunn was like, let's just fucking cause problems. <laughs> Everyone's like, Velma and Daphne aren't like that. But I was like, honestly, very forward for its time. So this one I knew about beforehand. Okay. Um, and I've, I've actually heard uh, or I've seen interviews with James Gunn where he has he's gone on record 
he's dismayed about the fact that they had to cut Velma's yeah. uh, Velma's homosexuality here. They, and apparently, from what I remember, they did it in in portions. At first, it was like, okay, she's fully gay. It's obvious, whatever. You know, we're we're being explicit about it. And then it was like, okay, no, we, she can still be gay, but let's let's take out the explicit yeah. references to it. And then, okay, we can hint that she's gay. And then all of a sudden, there's just none of it in the final cut. No gay. Yeah, no, no, gay. no gay whatsoever. No As a matter gay. of fact. No movie if no gay. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, we have her, we have this guy talking to her for most of yeah, the Yeah, exactly. We we have a prospective male, you know, uh, love interest here that uh, probably would have been better if it was, you know, a girl and more explicitly romantic mm -hmm. instead of just this weird, like, we're, we're hinting that they're they like each other, but also not at all. James, there's two ways you're going to yeah. do this. Either she's going to be straight and have a male love interest, or it's got to be some big busty broad that she fucking <laughs> sucks on and tits in the middle of the movie. Okay, Mr. Weinstein, I'll do that for you. Fact number three. The majority of the cast have voiced their displeasure with how the film turned out. Sarah Michelle Gellar was once asked which of her movies would she would forbid her kids from watching, either Cruel Intentions or I Know What You Did Last Summer. And instead of choosing any of the answers she was given, she chose Scooby-Doo. Matthew Lillard initially disliked the film, but eventually warmed up to it. His performance as Shaggy was being consistently praised among critics who both liked and hated the film. And Lillard went on to be the voice of Shaggy through all animated Scooby-Doo cartoons when longstanding voice actor Casey Kasem, the original voice of Shaggy, retired in 2009. Even people that hated this movie were like, this is bad. They're like, but Matthew Lillard is Shaggy. I want to say that yeah. is Shaggy. That is 100% Shaggy. And he's, he's a perfect Shaggy. He's perfect. There is a reason why Casey Kasem full on named him as his heir yeah. to the Shaggy uh, character. To the Shaggy empire. When he, when he retired in 2009. because he was was only using 5% yes. of his power. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Are you challenging me? I'm not, Shaggy. I'm not. <laughs> Immediately after this movie came out, they greenlit What's New Scooby-Doo and uh, ran that for a few years. That was still Casey Kasem as Shaggy. They yeah. hadn't quite transitioned yet. Casey was still feeling, you know, that, that sort of ter territorial nature over the character. Totally understandable. He's been playing it since 1968. But then when, when Casey Kasem was ready to retire in 2009, they were still producing direct-to-DVD movies. Um, they were, I believe around that time, they must have been uh, probably doing initial brainstorming and like uh, pre-production storyboards for, you know, Mystery Incorporated or something like that that came out a few years later. It, it became pretty clear that once Casey retired, you know, obviously they need to, to replace him. And the, there was only one option. If I'm correct, there's only been like three people ever to play Shaggy. If we don't count the the Scoob movie that came yeah. out a few years ago. We don't need to talk about that. We don't need to talk about that. Matthew Lillard is, is one of them. I think there's, I can't remember who it was. I think there's a third person that's played Isn't there a one in like Scooby-Doo, The Mystery Begins, that, that, that TV movie? Oh shit, yeah, that was the live action Cartoon yeah. Network one, wasn't yeah. it? There's been a couple animated movies that have been neither Casey Kasem or Matthew Lillard. But beyond that, it, it has been them to the entire run of Scooby-Doo. There have been basically no other Shaggies. He is the best casting decision in this entire movie. And, and like I was saying earlier, the cast for this movie is perfect. But he is the best choice. I agree. I love his facial expressions in these movies, too. Yes. So animated. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he leans into it. Shame on you, Academy. Yeah. Shame on <laughs> and, you. And I, I, my understanding is that he loves playing Shaggy. He loves too. doing he, like, it. He yeah. adores being the character and, and is more than happy anytime he meets somebody out on the street. Like he'll, he'll do the Shaggy voice. He'll do the whole thing for them. Fact number four. The concept of a live-action Scooby-Doo sat in development hell for over 10 years. In the 90s, the film was offered to Tim Burton to direct and have creative control, with Jim Carrey slotted to play Shaggy and Sarah Gilbert attached to play Velma, but all three would pass on the project. Later, both Kevin Smith and Mike Myers were slated to lead the project, but they also left. The project finally fell to Gosnell in the early 2000s, but came just in time for the perfect cast. Yes. Jim Carrey is Shaggy. What do you think? Stay there is in. an alternate universe where Tim Burton's Scooby-Doo comes out with, with uh, Jim, Jim Carrey. Carrey playing Shaggy and... Jim Carrey is now the voice of Shaggy forever. Oh my God! There is there is a universe where that happens, and Matthew Lillard is the Grinch. And I can't. I, 
<laughs> I, I would be down. I would be kind of down to see uh, a Tim Burton Scooby Doo movie. Well, get on it, scientists. Let's get to the other universe. Let's see what <laughs> see what it looks like over there. Yeah, well, fuck Wednesday. Let's do Scooby Doo. Yeah, yeah, fuck it. Kevin Smith Scooby Doo actually sounds kind of cool too. As long as he could do an R rated one that's like purely just script heavy, just make it be Clerks but Scooby Doo. I would watch that a hundred percent. Yeah, the initial concept for Scooby Tim Burton Scooby Doo was he they essentially were like we want you to do Batman. <laughs> we want you to do 89 Batman, but make it kind of adult for like Scooby Doo. Can you imagine like a gothic level Scooby Doo for like adults? I mean, who would be the Joker stand in there? What kind of Scooby Doo Joker are they going to do if they're remaking the 1989? There, there's Batman? really there's really only one person <laughs> to stand out as the top, and it's got to be the Creeper. The Creeper is the number one villain. You got to have you got to have the standout. He's Scooby Doo's he's Scooby Doo's yeah. Joker. Like Instead everyone of, knows the Creeper. Well, right? I mean, there's all <laughs> ah, there's so many good villains though, man. There's also so, uh, Dr. Jekyll or yeah. Mr. Hyde, that episode. There's also the um, the uh, the diving suit episode. Captain Cutler. Or, or my favorite. The one, uh, my my personal favorite is the the one in the abandoned airfield. Uh, the, spooky, the, space the spooky Space, space Goon. That's, yeah. that's my favorite too. <laughs> I that think great. Tim Burton's Scooby Doo. Jack Nicholson is the voice of Scrappy. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Daphne. Wow. <laughs> Puppy power. <laughs> Decent people shouldn't live here. Nice. They'd be better off somewhere else. Daphne, I really would. Darling, light of, of my, my life. life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna <laughs> on your chest. I'm gonna <laughs> right on your chest. <laughs> Stop giving him Scooby snacks. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Back to number five. The pop punk band Simple Plan would have songs appear on the soundtracks of both this movie and its sequel, Monsters Unleashed. They would also record the theme song and appear as cameos in the cartoon What's New Scooby Doo, which debuted on Cartoon Network the same year as this movie. What a bunch of nerds. Unrelated, but the theme song to What's New Scooby Doo was my number four most played song on Spotify wrapped for 2023, but ignore that. Yeah, ignore that. How can I know? <laughs> Simple plan who will play the theme at all their concerts. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. They, no, no, they, no, no. If people, they don't, I, I would be pissed. No, they, they actually riot. do. I've, I've, uh, <laughs> I've, I've confirmed this. I've done some research on this online and, and full on, like it's a thing with their fan base. People will show up in Scooby Doo gear. Yeah, like, yeah. Should we, should we go see Simple Plan dressed as Scooby, the Scooby yes. Doo cast? Yeah, yeah, let's, let's do that. Unequivocally. Let's yes. go do that. All okay. right. Dibs on Shaggy. Yeah, okay, no, fine. no, you're Daphne. You redhead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to be Daphne. I thought it was the most beautiful. <laughs> Vanessa has to be Daphne. A guy said, you look like Velma one time, and she went fucking off on me. She's just like, fuck Velma. I fucking hate Velma. She's fucking ugly. <laughs> I always Whoa. wanted to be Daphne. <laughs> Vel Velma's the the low key hot one, man. Vel Velma's the sleeper. Everyone everyone thinks in Daphne's these the movies. hot one. Dorothy chicks like you turned me on but to. Fuck man, Linda Cardellini in this movie. Oh yeah, it's not fair. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, it's not fair. Oh, not even close. Not there right. was a lot of banging theme songs to come out of cartoons in the early two thousands, but what's new Scooby Doo is uh, cream of the crop. Pretty man. much up there. It's yeah. up there. We're on to the what a story mark. Don't look at it yet, Cameron. What this again reminder? This is the most interesting or funnest, most fun fact I found about the movie. Uh, Nick and Cameron never seen this before, and Cameron, I'm gonna let you rate it from one to five marks in the vein okay. of our hero Tommy Rizzo. <laughs> what a story, Mark! According to Sarah Michelle Geller, the original script had a scene that included a joke aimed at Fred's sexuality. The scene would have depicted Fred and Daphne arguing, where she would yell out. <laughs> and that ascot makes you look gay before slamming the door and leaving. Geller was extremely disappointed it was removed, saying that, that, quote, the scene was the reason I actually signed on to the movie. I, Nathan, personally believe this line is highly offensive and should have been rewritten to something along the lines of, that's a cute ascot. Did your husband give it to you? Because then it would have stayed in the movie. <laughs> and I know, I know where that comes from. <laughs> where does it, it come from, Cameron? Another movie released in the exact same year yep. uh, has word for word that exact joke, and that is Spider-Man yes. with Tobey Maguire. The first Spider-Man quip is, as we did in the original Spider-Man, a homophobic slur. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> 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 they were like, oh, we got to cut that. But I was like, well, they didn't cut it in Spider-Man as long as you imply <laughs> that he's gay. Not say that he's directly gay, but you got to imply it. And I just want to say, like this is such a perfect encapsulation of early 2000s cop pop culture because it was so commonplace 
back yeah. then to to use gay as a slur like that of just like stupid or or whatever. See, this is something now where you show this to Gen Z and they're like, they're like, well, we could take that. We should take that line out. No, 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 put that back in. <laughs> <laughs> you you keep the slur in there. Yeah, no, I give that I give that one a solid three marks. Three out of five marks. While okay. I, while I was not familiar with that specific story, it makes sense. No. For Nick's bit, it's going to be Cameron's bit, and I have a couple more questions for him. Which scene? stood out to you most when you first saw this? Probably all of the scrappy stuff because I thought that <laughs> yeah, was just yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah. uh, at the time when I, when I was a little kid, I was super into it. Like you, Nick, I think I was definitely creeped out by that first scene where Scooby's trying to go get the hamburgers. Yeah, and and get snuck up on by by one of the creatures. Um, that was definitely that was a stressful scene in the theaters when I was a kid. I was I was not prepared for that. Shit. The the body swap scene with Fred and and Daphne, Damn. where he's looking down her shirt and shit. I'm like that that awoke some things. It in makes me, I me think. feel funny. <laughs> <laughs> Made little seven year old me feel some things. I don't know if you could pick a band or a musical artist today to do the theme. Who would it be? Oh shit. Care. First thing that comes to mind just for shits and gigs is like a Monomarth, like a properly heavy metal Scooby-Doo theme would look like. Yeah. Um, but if we're looking for something more like appropriate, Olivia Rodrigo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. okay. It, it just just it, if I was if I was a casting director, I was, okay. I was, you know, music director for for a new Scooby-Doo movie. And I was like, all right, who who would the kids like? Um, that, that still has the kind of the proper vibe for Scooby-Doo. I, the first person that pops into mind actually is Olivia Rodrigo. Yeah. Reminds me of Alien Invaders where Jennifer Love Hewitt did the theme. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 I would love to hear Ghost do the Scooby-Doo theme. That'd be kind of cool. That would actually. be fucking awesome. I'd be into that. See some dark wave version of it. <laughs> Maybe like She Passed Away or Twin Tribes. Oh, or dude. A she Wants Revenge. Could be. Could be. If you could see a third movie. What would you want it to be about? Cap off the trilogy. There was a perspective movie introduced that you'll learn about in the uh, second one we did. You know, but what, what would you want? I think my idea for a third live action Scooby-Doo has actually kind of already been done because I would want to do something very, very similar to what they do in the Mystery Incorporated show. If you guys haven't seen it, like I don't really... I don't really want to spoil too much, but I will. You can, if, you you can if you want. I've so never spoil, seen it, but um, I don't care. We spoiled this whole movie, so you so, can spoil this. <laughs> <laughs> so Mystery Incorporated, it has, I think, two or three seasons. Um, it's a serialized version of Scooby-Doo. So they actually have, you know, proper, you know, through episode stories. Um, weirdly enough, like Shaggy and Velma date for a while. Like, oh. it's actually... It, it. I've seen a few of them. Yeah, yeah. it takes the all of the the tropes that we all know and love about Scooby Doo and actually kind of pushes them a little bit and and leans into them and and tries to extrapolate what um a serialized version of that would be but the coolest thing about it is when the series ends it goes right into the beginning of where are you no oh, shit the mystery incorporated show is all setting up for the general situation they're in just going across the country you know solving mysteries in their van in where are you it nice. sets all of that up we had a third scooby-doo movie that's what i would want to see too i would want to see it wrap up open-ended enough that I'm, that you're like oh, okay so here's where the the you know monster of the week story kind of starts because the, all the character stuff is figured out all of the whatever's figured out and it's just a group of people you know open-ended going on adventures mm. at the end of the movie right. i don't know what they do to get there um but that's i think that's that would be the way i would want it to end at nice. least okay okay yeah it's the rogue one too exactly yeah, are you? yes <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. it's the uh it's the it's the it's Final Destination 5, everybody. Five. Spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> it's like, wait, it's a pre... Oh, the movie's over. No, no, what, yeah. what the Top three animated Scooby-Doo movies. Take a second here. I'm going to extrapolate. Okay. So I'm going to do series first and then movies. Take your time. As far as series goes, uh, Where Are You is number one, 100%. And then right under it, just barely not neck and neck with it, is uh, What's New Scooby-Doo? And then right under that, uh, is a tie between Pup Named Scooby-Doo okay. and Mystery Incorporated. Okay, okay. Those are my three favorites. As far as the movies go, two of them are going to be from the, f the the run of four from the 90s. So I think number mm -hmm. one has got to be Zombie Island. Oh, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. All-time all classic. Number two, and two and three I think are pretty interchangeable here. I'm not going to say I like one more than the yeah. other. 
Uh, number two, I'm going to go with Cyber Chase. Sure. Because that right was like, Cyber Chase that was good. growing up. That was my favorite. They are in a video game. Yeah, exactly. And we're was, gamers, bro. <laughs> I was so obsessed when I was a kid. I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. Did you ever play the video game itself? No, I did Where not. you can play through like as Shaggy and Scooby through different time periods yeah, and stuff. Did cool. not. Yeah. I, I always wanted it, but I, I I never got that one for my Sorry Game Boy, unfortunately. That. Sorry about that. Um, And then the third one is uh actually, I can't remember the official title. I think think it's happy halloween scooby-doo but i could be mixing that one up with this a is a newer one, one right it, it, this is a newer one so this one just came out in the last i want to say three years four years i think it was maybe 2019 or 2020 or something like that and this one was written and directed by maxwell adams the right creator on. of Billy and Mandy. Who, who created Billy and Mandy, uh, The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, which yep. is my all-time favorite cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> Your final thoughts on this movie. Yeah, go ahead. Man, I know it has problems. I, and it's not a perf- it's not a, a perfect movie, str- like, production-wise. If you're looking at it through a critical lens, you're going to have problems to find problems with it, whatever. But this so- this movie has so much nostalgia baked in for me and so yep. many good memories and so much just good feelings that I I I can't say a single bad thing about it. <laughs> From my perspective, yeah. I know there's objectively things wrong with it, but for me, this movie is 100 out of 100 every single time. Nice. Oh, man. So that, that's your honorary rating for it too? Yes. 100 out of 100. Damn, we haven't even got to the rating. But <laughs> final thoughts, Nick, what do you think? Back then, I didn't know how to put, to, put into words how disappointed I was. But n- n- now I know it's because it, was, it, it had a very cynical portrayal of the characters and the real life consequences and bitterness. I was talking to a good friend of mine last night and she was saying, I love these movies and I love that first one. Especially, I love the first one because... I understand where you're coming from, why you were disappointed by it, but I love that it really did kind of showcase real life, as in, we all do get sick of each other at some point. We all get very mad at each other, but at the end of the day, we all do love each other and come, ba- and come back to each other. That's yeah. good. And that yeah. is what they do at the end of this. So shout out to Janessa. I see you. It is funny. I laughed a lot watching it again. It's super weird, but it's enjoyable when you're an adult now in on the joke. And because it has so much bizarreness and intensity to it, I forget Five Nights at Freddy's. This is baby's first horror film, (laughs) honestly, in my opinion. I just, this was fun to check out again. It really was. I I appreciate the cynical approach they take with an already established piece of media. You got to take risks when you already have an established piece of media. You got to do something different. I don't want to see Scooby-Doo. I want to see something a little bit different. So for that, I appreciate it a lot. And, you know, just Scooby-Doo in general, like, this is how a lot of horror fans start. It, Baby's first horror is Scooby-Doo the series, right? It's it's always something safe. You know it's a guy in a mask. You know you can be a little scared. At the end of the day, they're going to show you it's some weirdo that wants to steal a treasure or except, wants a piece of land. Except like those two times. Where except except those two times where it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> but for this one, right, it may continue to grow. Uh, <laughs> except, but this one has a special place being a millennial. And uh, so, Nick, uh, camera rates this 100 out of 100. Uh, what are you feeling for the rating? I give it about a 73. 73. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I would say 60. Okay. I like that. 60 plus 73 divided by 2 is a 66.5, with Cameron's honorary rating as guest 100 out of 100. Fair enough. I mean, we always give guests the honorary rating. The honorary like, rating is 100. Watch Scooby-Doo. Watch Scooby-Doo. Yeah. <laughs> Monsters Unleash is coming up on its 20th anniversary this year. This is the perfect time. Uh, ask for Cameron's Plex login. He'll let you see it. Uh, go ahead and email him directly at. Before we finish this off, I think we could play a fun little game. Now, Cameron, this is a, a bit I'm talking about. Scooby Dooby, don't fuck with me. And this is the <laughs> right. this is the game. Scooby Doo has faced a lot of really weird villains over the years. A lot of True. interesting villains. Yeah. So this is the game. <laughs> One of these is a real Scooby Doo villain. Synopsis, plot, and episode title. The other okay. one is something I had chat GPT write for me. <laughs> one of these is real. All one right. of these is not. Let's so see if I remember the We're going to play a game. So we'll play with both you and Nick. Nick, can, I, I, Nick and I will go. One of them will be real. One of them won't be. Can you tell me what series it's from? I will tell you after. I will okay. tell you after right, 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 each, right. each one. Option number one. Scooby and the gang set out on a winter adventure to a remote ski resort in the Canadian Rockies, where rumors of a creature haunting the slopes have scared away visitors. While out skiing, the group crosses paths with the Frostbit Phantom, a terrifying spirit of the forest 
It is up to Scooby and the gang with the members of Simple Plan to solve this mystery. And that's from What's New Scooby-Doo Season 3, Episode 4 from 2005. Here we go. Number two. Join Scooby-Doo and the gang in a sticky sweet mystery in the vibrant town of Coolsville. The gang's favorite candy factory is under attack from a mischievous villain known as the Caramel Phantom. Disguised in a ghostly caramel wrapper costume, can Scooby-Doo and the gang undercover the true identity of the Phantom, save the factory in this race against time? And that is A Pup Named Scooby-Doo, Season 2, Episode 7, 1989. I think the real one is the simple plan one. Simple plan? Okay. I, I'm going to look like a fool if I'm wrong here, yeah. um, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm right. Okay. So they're both real episodes, but uh, ChatGPT changed the monster name of the one from What's New. This is interesting. Uh, um, I made up both of these. <laughs> I lied. I straight lied on these ones. <laughs> so, they're, they're, so you kind of caught it that you there are elements of real in all of it. Well, but so I have real. The, we'll play in the real round right now. But so, I just wanted I just wanted to see what you'd say. But I wasn't expecting to get caught like this. <laughs> they're both they're both based off of real episodes. <laughs> these are the real two. One of these is for sure real. I guarantee it. Promise. 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 Number one. Scooby-Doo, Shaggy, and Scrabby-Doo are excited for the premiere of a new horror flick at an old movie theater. As the trio settles into their seats and lights begin to dance across the screen, the cinema shade appears on screen, pulling the gang into a black and white world of classic horror movies. And that's from season one, episode 12 of The 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo. Okay. Number two. Late one night in the National Gazette newspaper office, Dimondo, one of the 13 ghosts, infuses the next day's edition with his spiritual elixir, which gives life to printed images. He is able to embed himself into the comics page, where he will use the pen and abilities to bring Shaggy, Scooby, Daphne, and Flim Flam onto the paper with him. Season 1, Episode 10 of The 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo. Which one do you think is a chat GPT made up one? So this is much harder because I actually haven't seen a ton of 13 ghosts. Um, that is one of the only Scooby-Doo series that I have not actually really I've jumped into. I've watched a few of them. So yeah, I'm a little um, more aware. I'm going to go with the first one being real. First one being real? I'm going to go with uh, the uh, second one is the real one. Nick is correct. The ah, first okay. the first one is Chat GPT. See, Similar plot lines, but Demondo uh, is a real ghost. He is a green hairy ghost that growls and makes weird squeaking sounds. That's see, his whole bit. I had and he I had a little bit of comic books. <laughs> I had a little bit too much faith. Uh what what year was 13 Ghosts? Was that like late 70s? It was the 80s, I believe. It's er, early oh, the 80s. Yeah, so it was 1985. Oh, okay. So 13 Ghosts was the series that came out right before Pup came out. Yeah. Then. All right. Well, first of all, thank you, Cameron, for coming on down and Thanks, talking Scooby Doo with us. We appreciate it. Yeah, uh, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Anytime. Any more Scooby Doo, you're on. <laughs> thank you for watching and listening to this episode of the One and a Half White Guys podcast. Be sure to follow us, rate us, and subscribe to us wherever you get your podcast from. And don't forget to follow us on our Instagram at One and a Half White Guys Podcast on TikTok at One and a Half White Guys, and now on our YouTube, which is hopefully you're watching the extended cut of this. <laughs> on one and, a half, one and a Half White Guys. And be sure to tell a friend to listen to the podcast where we say we're going to talk about a movie and then we kind of talk about the movie. I think we <laughs> only talked about the movie. Usually we yes. get totally distracted. There's like one third of it is the movie. This is at least 95% the nah, movie. I'm, I'm keeping you guys on track. I'm way too obsessed with Scooby Doo <laughs> to get sidetracked <laughs> no, on we this did shit. Good. No. Cameron, just be on and keep us on track with the rest of the movie. <laughs> we did a good job. We did We did good job this time. All right. Bye, everyone. Have a fun, safe, spooky time and maybe watch some more Scooby Doo. While you're at it indulge by all means always watch more scooby-doo oh, bye ruby dooby-doo